Okay, the last thing that we're going to talk about with exponential functions is how to transform them or translate them on our coordinates. You should have done this with figures last year in eighth grade, but now we're going to do it with functions. And the rules we learned today go for all types of functions, not just exponential. The first thing you want is to have two different colored writing utensils, um, or you might just need to be a little bit creative with how we draw this on the graph. So it says to graph y equals 3 to the x in black. And since we got a lot of practice today doing the table, I've already done it for you. Uh, 1 over 27, 1 over 9, and 1 over 3 are really close to 0. So I'm just going to do my first point as 0, 1. And then just as I go over, you know, just get really close to the x-axis. And then 1, 3 and two, nine. Make sure yours are actually on the points. I'm doing the best I can. So here's my original function, which is what we call the parent function. Okay, and then we're going to transform them. So first we need to see what happens if I add this minus two at the end. What is going to happen? So I have negative three, negative 2, let me redo that point, I have negative 2, negative 2, negative 1, negative 2, and then 0, negative 1, and 1, 1, and 2, 7. So that one looks like that, okay? And my last one looks like it's a little bit above two for my first three values. Here we go. And then I have zero, three. I have one, five, and then two, 11 is somewhere kind of up there. And they look like they're touching at the top. They really aren't. It's just they're getting so close together. So think about the difference between my black equation and my first one, the red. The difference in the equation is I have this minus 2. And what happened to my graph? You don't need to draw this, but I'm going to point. What happened to go from the black to the red thing? How did it move? Okay, and then what happened when I added two at the end? How did that move from my original from my black? Think about what you think this does. Well, it's going to move up, shift my entire graph up if the constant is positive. This is the case in the last example and it's going to shift the entire thing down if the constant at the end is negative. So that's the rule when I have something at the end of my equation. Okay, And we're going to look at tomorrow in more detail. I can notate this as f of x plus k. And if k is negative, then it's going to go down. And if k is positive, it's going to go up. So I'm just going to write k is positive, k is negative. All right. And now let's see what happens if it's in the exponent with the x. Quickly, I'm going to sketch my same original. Getting a little bit better with this. One, three. 2, 9. Okay, there we go. Once again, um, I think I'm going to do different colors this time. So I'm going to do my next one in pink. So the first point I really see that I can graph is 2, 1, and then I have 3, 3, and if I multiply 3 by 3, I get 9. Okay, what, what does it look like happened? I didn't really move it up or down at all. It really moved to the right, but look at your equation. It says x minus two, so that's a little bit 
you know, not what I would normally expect. I would think minus would mean goes to the left. Let's see if that's true over here. Negative two, one. Negative one, three, zero, nine. What happened if it's positive? It moved it to the left. So the thing with right and left is it's kind of contrary to what I would normally think. So it's going to move left if the constant is positive. And it's going to move right if the constant is negative. Once again, with my function notation, it's going to look a little bit different. It's going to be f of x plus k. Notice that the plus k is not outside. It's now inside my parentheses. And when you have something that's inside the parentheses with the x, or in the case of my exponential function, it's an implied parentheses. It's up there in the exponent with x. It does the opposite. Okay, so that means it's going to move left if k is positive, and it's going to move right if k is negative. So what I'd like you to have done for tomorrow is to memorize these rules. What does it mean to move up, to move down, to move right, and to move left? Make sure that you also finished all of those problems from in class today, the little slips of paper. Have a good night.